Hello everyone, Chef Kim here. Today I'm going to demonstrate the procedure for making green chili sauce. Now this is a key ingredient to finish a couple of different recipes that I've shown on other videos. One, for instance, is chicken enchiladas. If you don't smother it in green chili sauce, it's not finished. So you better watch this video so you'll know how to complete that recipe because you'll have to try those chicken enchiladas. They're very good, if I do say so myself. You'll also need this sauce for huevos rancheros. So check it out. I think it's worth it. It's always good to learn something new. Thanks for watching it. Happy cooking. So here's my mise en place for the green chili sauce. I have some butter and flour. We're going to make a roux like you would do for a soup also. So this procedure that I'm showing you for this green chili sauce is very similar to soups that I will show you in the future, like cream of mushroom or whatever. Now I also have some cayenne pepper, some onions, diced green chilies, have some chili powder, cumin, sour cream, and chicken base. Now make sure with chicken base that you get a good quality. Do not use like chicken bouillon. That is basically salt. But a good chicken base, the first ingredient will be chicken. The first thing we're going to do is heat our pot. Now try and use a heavy bottomed pot. This is an old pot, but it's a goodie. I'll tell you what, it's real heavy. If you have a thin bottom pot and you're making a roux, you're going to probably burn it. I hate to tell you, but it's worth the investment. So we'll put our butter in to melt. And a, ro a roux is spelled R-O-U-X. It's a French word, and it's a thickening agent. Now I'm using butter and flour. Flour is always the main ingredient, but it doesn't necessarily have to be butter. I worked in a restaurant where we used duck fat to make our roux. It was a good way to save money since we served ducks every night, and there's a lot of fat that comes out of ducks. However, everything, every sauce that you make or soup, to me, is going to taste like duck, so I don't think it's the best thing for all your sauces. Once we get the butter melted, we're going to add our onions. Now, a lot of recipes will have you cook the vegetables separate and make the roux in one pan, cook the vegetables in another pan. I do it all in the same pan. Then you're not losing any flavor. You save a little on washing dishes, too, which we all like to save on that, right? So we just want to cook these onions for a few minutes and then we're going to lower the heat and add the flour. Now a very important part when you're making a roux is cooking it out. What I mean by that is you're cooking the floury flavor out. If you don't do that, your sauce or soup is going to taste floury. So it doesn't take very long. For a small batch like this, it only takes about 5 or 10 minutes. So it's worth taking the time. So these onions need to cook eh, a couple of minutes for sure. So I think the onions are ready. They've cooked enough. We're going to turn the heat down. We're going to turn it down as far as we can. Now, on electric stoves, it's hard to get it really low so you might have to kind of have your pan off to the side now you want equal amounts flour and butter and it should end up looking like wet sand so this is what we want and we want to just leave it sitting on the stove over very low heat and we're going to stir it occasionally not constantly just occasionally you don't want it to brown now the roux has been cooking for about five minutes which like I said previously five to ten minutes for a small amount of roux like this so my roux is ready it's been cooking for about six minutes 
and you can tell the smell but follow my recipe and you have to do it the minimum that I say I might say five to ten or six to eight you have to do it at least the six so in order to have a much better sauce so use your whisk and add a small amount to start it still looks the same right it's gonna start looking a little like mashed potatoes in a minute. Now we add a little bit more. I don't want you to add the whole amount of water at once. See it now? Kind of looking like mashed potatoes. And now we want to turn our heat back up to about medium. And make sure you stir it in good. By adding a small amount in the beginning, you're avoiding having lumps. Now we want to bring this to a boil. Obviously, any sauce or soup needs to come to a boil. It needs to simmer in order to get the flavors to come out. So you might need to turn it up to high to get it going and then adjust your heat. You don't ever want to keep a sauce on high heat. You only want it so your sauce is gently bubbling. Simmering is the technical word, not bubbling. <laughs> but just to give you a picture in your mind. And you can see mine starting to simmer a little around the edges. And you will see it getting thicker. Now the one thing with a roux thickened sauce, it will continually get thick. Like let's say you use some today and tomorrow you heat it up and oh my goodness it's really thick again. Just add some more water to it generally is all you need. Now I'm going to lower it because it's boiling pretty good. And now I'm going to add more water. Now I'm going to add some of these other ingredients. Let's add our chicken base. The green chilies are going to thin it out a little bit. So let's go ahead and add some of these before we add any more water. Cumin. Now, the cayenne pepper, use it at your discretion. Like, if you like your green chili sauce spicy, real spicy, then add more cayenne pepper. That's where your heat is going to come from. It's not going to come from the green chilies or the chili powder but it will come from the cayenne pepper. You can add some black pepper too. You should not need any salt because the chicken base does have salt. I'm gonna give it a taste. That's always important. Now we wanna let this simmer. We're gonna turn it down real low again. And we'll let it go for about 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes. And then we're going to add the sour cream, but we're not going to bring it to a boil anymore once we add that sour cream. So you want to make sure that your sauce is right. Yeah, you can bring it, you can heat it back up once the sour cream is in. You just don't want to boil it because it'll separate because of the sour cream. Okay. So the sauce has been simmering long enough. I'm not going to thin it too much. This is a sauce, not a soup. So it does need to be a little thicker than a soup would be. So I'm going to turn off the heat. And then I'm going to add some, some of the sour cream. That's what makes this sauce really yummy. <laughs> and it changes the color. A hundred percent. See that? This sauce is awesome.
So thanks, everybody. Happy cooking.